actually. Um, my values, more interestingly, can conflict with my interests as well. Right? So that's the example I actually gave you a moment ago. I really um, hate that construction site or the idea of that construction site. But I also value efficiency. And I think that more people being able to get to work on public transport using that LRT line will be more efficient than everyone driving their own vehicle to work. And so there my value conflicts with my interest. Again, I might be able in that case to set my interest aside and say, I'll put up with it because efficiency is something way more important than my own comfort, right? That's just an interest. The value is something I hold dear. The really interesting cases of intrapersonal conflict, of conflict within you, are, for most people, most of the time, value conflicts, right? Where one value conflicts with another value. And I'm sure that during the course of this de deliberation, you will come up against moments when you realize that you hold conflicting values, if you haven't already, right? Maybe you already have. Um, and that doesn't make you um, a wishy-washy, inconsistent moral thinker. It just makes you a complex, real person. Because um, I would argue that any moral agent who's doing any difficult thinking at all is going to come up with value conflicts within themselves. So it might be that I value a less degraded environment. Okay? But that's something that's really important to me. But I also really value individual freedom. Right? So what am I going to say to the person who says, Look, I want to leave my house when I want to leave my house. I want to get straight into my vehicle. I want to get to work. I want to get out at the other end. I don't want this walking. I don't want these crowds. I don't want to have to deal with the cold. My individual choice is to drive my car to work. And some part of me is going to say, yeah, I think that you should be free to make that choice for yourself. But it's also the case if we all make that choice for ourselves, that we're going to have more vehicles on the roads, and that seems to be degrading our environment, and I don't like that either. Right? So, whatever it is that she's doing. Um, so you will come across and bring to this process that kind of, of value conflict. The other obvious way that you'll encounter value conflicts is um, among ourselves. So you'll be talking to different people within this space who will have values that are different than your own. So someone else, and maybe you've already had a little argument about this, right? Already somebody might say, well, the greatest value, my most important value, if I had to bring it all down to one thing, is to maximize the happiness of those human beings, and only human beings, who are living on the planet now, not in the future. Right? That's my greatest value. Somebody else might say, um, I think that the sustainability of the Earth as a living entity <coughs> is what it all comes down to. That is the foundation. That's my key value if I had to pick one thing that underlies everything else. And so you can see it's going to be very difficult for those two people to reconcile such fundamentally different basic values. Right? So that's one of the challenges of this kind of process. So, you might think, well, what's the point? We've all got different values. It's shown us convincingly that they can't be reconciled, so we could all just go home now. <coughs> because, I'm going to suggest to you, um, the practice of deliberation, which is what we're doing here, um, has have a value in helping people sort out their own values and reconcile differences of value, value conflicts that occur both within yourself and with others. So, first of all, you are charged with debating an issue where there is a great deal of scientific, technical, and otherwise expert information that's relevant. So there's a big knowledge base here. So it's certainly true that you'll be given information that comes from people who are technical experts of various kinds, and that you'll be expected as uh, lay people of various kinds to make sense of it. Um, and I, don't, I think you should do that. But I don't think you should see that as standing in the way of the significance of your own opinions. Because, even though you'll benefit from experts, 
living in a democracy, i.e. a state in which the people rule, let's just say, um, is, has a starting value, okay? and that is that the opinion, the view, the values of every citizen are important in the democratic process. So it actually doesn't matter, as a matter of principle, that this is not a room full of professional politicians, oil sands engineers, environmental experts, right? It doesn't matter for this process. Because although those people will inform what you deliberate on, actually what's important are your values and how you bring them to this process and how you talk about them with each other. So, we usually, in democracies, talk about value pluralism. Right? So the idea that there are different people holding lots of different values and that that ought to be fundamentally respected. Okay? That, that there's something about the fact that we are different and we have different values that deserves our deep respect because we respect people as individuals. However, it doesn't mean that we don't engage in processes designed to bring out what those values are. We don't change our minds. Right? We don't use collective contexts like this one to think through how we came to our values, whether we want to hold on to them or let them go, whether we want to tweak them or completely think something different at the end. So I see this process as an ongoing one where you bring your values to the table your values are respected, but they're also part of a process in which they're subject to thinking through uh, to possible change, to uh, revision, and you may influence others, right, to change or to revise their values. So um, I think it's a mistake to see uh, fundamental respect for others' values as a kind of throwing up of hands, right? So it's not about saying um, as, my next slide says, sorry. This, anyone who's a teacher will often have heard this from students, right? Well, that's just your opinion. <laughs> or in, in another kind of sort of defeatism, right? That's just my opinion. Um, it is true that people are entitled to their opinions. That's a way of understanding really what I just said. But an important question that you'll be pushed on, I think, as this goes along is, what values underlie your opinions, right? Where did they come from? What reasons can you give for holding those opinions? Are they good reasons? Do they stand up in the practice of deliberation? Um, so the purpose of deliberation, I think, is to assume that the views of all are valuable, that mutual respect, attentiveness and collaborative process, so this is not a combative process, or at least it's not intended as one, right? It's intended not to be a debate where you line people up on either side of the room and you get them to throw rocks at each other, right? It's intended as a conversational and collaborative process. Um, and that the point of that is to allow you to develop, to air, to change, to revise, and to work through what your values are in conversation with others and to influence or fail to influence others in the same way. So the values of deliberation, these values of attentiveness and cooperation and respect for others, um, assumes that the purpose of talking together is not just for us all to sit and say, that's just my opinion, that's just my opinion, right, without further openness, but to ask the difficult questions about what our underlying values really are, how we know what they are, which can be quite a difficult thing to work out, and how we might talk about them in a constructive and developing way with other people. So, that's all I have to say. Yeah, there's an opportunity for some questions. <laughs> there's an opportunity for some just why that's up there. I was, just, I was just doing that like teacher thing where I look at my own timing and I think. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was just a private value. Actuality. <laughs> Any questions? Anything that I've said is unclear or when you think I should have said it differently or.
Paulette, so let me have a question here. I, I think you should have been on earlier in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a compliment to me rather than as a sort of... Not just to get rid of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, yeah. thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. That's why we asked her here. <laughs> so you're not going to give us a list of our values. No. <laughs> I think I did give you one list that had some some things I thought you would probably have talked about on it, but but you have to you have to dig deep and find them. Yeah. Are general values important or personal values important? What do you mean by general values and personal values? Like the whole public as a general value is more important for your personal value yeah. to your own financial mm -hmm. and to your own practice. Yeah. So that's an interesting question that I think can be answered on a lot of different levels. Um, so let's say one of my personal values is punctuality and good timekeeping, right? I can um, maintain that value, I can stick to that value without really requiring anything much of anybody else, right? So occasionally I might get really snippy if my, if my little boy, who's the blonde kid who's running around here, takes, you know, <laughs> takes a really long time and won't put his shoes on, right? So there are things that can stand in the way of me enacting that value, but by and large it's something I can do for myself. If my value is um, respect for individual liberty, then obviously I'm going to have to work that out with other people in the largest way, right? And so the Canadian state struggles on all sorts of levels, obviously, to reconcile the value of individual liberty with other kinds of values and practical obstacles to ensuring individual liberty. And so one of the challenges of this space, I think, is when you're looking at bigger scale values that obviously require other people's cooperation or, and sometimes will require that we coerce other people right, into doing things that they don't want to do, like having an LRT built through their backyard, right? <laughs> then um, we have to say, well, what process would we consider to be fair to get to an agreement that that's the value? And it might need to include an agreement from those people who are going to have to change their behavior or be coerced in certain ways, right? So um, reaching a larger scale collective agreement about the value <coughs> is a very difficult controversial process and you are in a small way doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Does, that, does that address what you were getting yeah. at? Yeah. Because it depends to what the part of the be. <coughs> it may be religious, it might be environment, right. it could be personal, it could be Right. Right, yes, your values can come from lots of different, lot of different sources. Sources, yeah. sources religious, non-religious. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can invite press to the back. We're in those value tussles and we're really struggling with it, so you know, so uh, I think we'd love to do that actually. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna help us. Sadly, we have to wrap this part up because we need to kind of move on to a couple of, we want to feed back on some of the scenario work you did and we want to actually then do some values uh, exercise to put into practice some of the um, good um, uh, advice and guidance that Preston has given us. So let's uh, give Preston a